Hey folks, Dave here and I like knives. Here to talk to you today about the Spyderco Shaman. Shaman, Shaman, one of them. This is a relatively new offering from Spyderco, obviously, that has definitely blown out the gate, becoming a legitimate competitor in areas across the board and eliciting a whole lot of sprint runs and attention from Spyderco as well as kind of the rest of the knife world. But first, size comparisons. Here we have the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. So you can see that blade length as well as handle length are both very similar compared to the Rat 1. Just uh, much more material in a width perspective. Next is the Spyderco Endura and Delica. So you can see that blade length a little bit longer on the Endura. Handle length actually a little bit longer on the Shaman. Next up, Spyderco PM2 and Para 3. This is definitely one that we're coming back to, but for now, just pay attention to how it's more or less the exact same proportions as the PM2. Here we have the Griptilian on top, the Benchmade Griptilian up top, and the Mini Grip down here on the bottom. So you can see quite a bit more substantial than the Griptilian. Similar blade length, a little, well, considerably more handle area. And for kicks and giggles, here we have it lined up against several other kind of hard use, traditional work knives. Contigo, Benchmade Contigo, Cold Steel Recon 1, Sog Seal XR. So you can see that in this category, at least from the options that I have, that I personally have available, it is the smallest one. With a knife as generally well regarded as this one is, it's obvious that there's gonna be a ton of gold, but as quirky as it is, there's gonna be a little bit of garbage too. Let's get into it. Starting out with the good, obviously, we have to talk about variety. This comes in, well, Spyderco is giving it the PM2 treatment, and this one in front of you is the sprint run. Actually, that's something I should address first. This is the Blade HQ M4 sprint run. It was offered in both satin and coated blades. Being M4, I'm of the personal belief that no M4 should be offered in satin blade, just for rust things, but whatever. So that is why it is both coated and has the natural J, uh, JG10 handle scales. We'll come back to those later. But going back into it, we have the variety. Same as how the uh, Paramilitary 2 is offered in every steel under the sun, the Shaman is working on catching up with it. To my knowledge, there is no current S35 or Maximet. Not X, S. Actually, I don't know if there's an S35 either. But as far as things like Z-Wear, Crewwear, Nick's Knives exclusive was in 4V. Blight HQ's exclusive is in M4. It doesn't look like Spyderco is going to spend any kind of time or effort pushing. I know there was an S90V one as well. I highly doubt that they will do something as fragile as Maximet, simply because this is supposed to be a hard, hard use work knife. And when you get the extremely hard steels, such as Maximet, there can be chipping problems. What they've gone with so far, the crew wears, the 4Vs, etc. M4 being a possible exception to this somewhat, I just really like M4, is that they are going for something that will roll before it breaks. Still has incredible cutting power, just not as much as Maximet to get the trade-offs. But there are a lot of options in this. Something that will be very relevant to my life coming up here shortly, hopefully if it ever gets delivered, I'll get into that later, are the torque sizes. Spyderco is very good about not putting, for instance, a Torx 8 and a T6 for the body screws kind of thing. This is a T10 for the pivot and T8 for the body screws. I greatly appreciate that. If you're going to use T10, just go ahead and use T10 for all of it or use T8 for all of it. But if you're not using T6, at least that like that's the start of a conversation. The pocket clip screws, these are T6, but they are out of the way, so if you need to take it apart to get to the inside, 
you don't have to take the pocket clip off so you can live your whole life with never moving the pocket clip. I like that. The pocket clip itself is a definite plus. Similar to how I talked about with the SOG seal, how this style of pocket clip being so massive and kind of an, an obnoxious thing that is a very high rider, Spyderco Shaman fits a similar mold. That this is in no way an EDC style deep carry pocket clip. It's not supposed to be. This and with the screws up top is something that you are supposed to be able to go in and grab with your with gloves on and pull out of your back pocket just by holding the screws. It would be much more EDC friendly if it were a little bit lower, possibly by moving that body screw. But overall, for this, for its intended purpose and the purpose that I use it for, I don't super mind that. This is not something that stays in my basketball shorts. It's something that goes in my cargo pants kind of thing. Also, among the good are the variety of ways that you can open this thing. For instance, obviously, you know the spider flick. You probably know slow roll. You might even know, ow, I believe that's referred to as the spidey drop, but just pinch the blade and throw and it opens that way. What you might not know, and we'll see if I can do it on camera. Ha ha, second try, is that this is a front flipper. Not a very good one, it's not meant for it. And also this jimping up here is so aggressive, it will eat your thumb if you try to do that too much. But it is a front flipper. It can be, it, it, it is not a front flipper. It can be a front flipper. Something to keep in mind. The milled liners are another huge plus. Is that something, yeah, you can see those holes right back there and you can see a ton of them right back there. All of those holes that you just saw inside on the internal liner are to reduce weight which I would have loved to see what it weighed before those holes were cut because this is 5.2 ounces. It's, like I said, it's not supposed to be a super light minimalist EDC everyday carry. This is a hard use boy and that helps to build and you know, the weight, the size, the heft helps build into the general robustness of the tool. Now, speaking to robustness, I mentioned earlier that this is kind of, perfectly made for a gloved hand. This is what I'm talking about. With that massive forward troll, it really does let you get right up in there, jimping is perfect, that you're not going over the edge of it. The blade handle, the, not the blade, the handle is much larger than a PM2, which allows it to fill your hand very comfortably. And like I was talking about earlier, pulling on that pocket clip is very easy with the gloves. The cutout for the lock, very easy for get your glove in there and do it. The ergonomics are just simply amazing. Perhaps the most comfortable knife that I own. I love using this thing. You can choke up, get your finger right out there to the tip, very comfortably hooking your finger in there. Any grip that you really choose to, to try to use with this one is secure. One thought that I had, I would have liked if they had put just a little bit of like Skinner jumping down here on the front, but I like that on most knives and most knives don't have it. Last is going to be that compression lock. Because it is a Spyderco with that hole. Of course, you can flick it. And the compression lock is right back here. Nowhere in the course of things does your finger ever need to be in the way of the blade. You can pull it out from the front and close it from the back and your finger never nears, never nears the sharp end. Your hands are completely safe. I love the compression lock and it's perfectly done here. However, with all of that good, there's still going to be a little bit of garbage. Leading off, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, the three torque sizes, I really don't like that. T10, T8, T6, 
That's confusing. That's unnecessary. Make them all, make everything, including the pocket screws, make everything just a T8. You're so close to doing it, Spyderco, but you do this on all of your knives, and I don't think anybody appreciates it. Just make them all T8s. Chamfering was def is definitely an issue on mine specifically. I don't know if this is a general problem. I've never seen anybody else complain about this. My specific Spyderco Shaman came with very sharp sides and sides that were not well fit to this backspacer. So, ev well, even still, you can still feel a groove down the middle where the backspacer does not completely match up with the scales. It was so bad, in fact, that I had to take down the knife and take a Dremel and sandpaper to the G10 scales. Wear a, wear a mask. Do not, do not do anything modifying-wise to G10 without something covering your mouth and nose. It's very, very dangerous, is my understanding. I don't want you getting lung cancer. Please don't get lung cancer. The chamfering on mine sucked. It was terrible. So I had to fix it, and I did definitely make it a little bit better. The part that I can't really fix, at least I don't know how to, are the smooth scales. For as hard a work knife as this is sold to be, I really, really don't like the lack of texture. There is... I think you heard that. I hope you did. But that's just me scraping my fingernail on the side of this. There is a little bit of texture but not very much, especially not compared to, for someone used to kind of the little bit more aggressive of the PM2. For this reason, I have actually an order out on Fireside Company, I think, Micarta Handle Scales. I, I tried to get them as close to the JG10 as possible. So hopefully they'll arrive sometime this week or next week. I don't know, I'll let you know. We'll see how it works. But I'm very excited for those to come in and add another dimension of what the Shaman was always supposed to be. The price is not something I super like. This, the M4 version, was about 220, 225, I think. The base level with a black handle, satin blade, and S30V steel is still about $200. Now, the base level PM2, when I when I got my first PM2, the base level cost about 120, 130. Now they cost 160, 170. I understand that there's a little bit of price creep in there, there's a little bit of inflation, but for this to walk up that much and this to jump when it's essentially the same thing, just a little bit thicker, I don't like that, obviously. I'm sure that logistically, Mr. Spider Co. just simply had to, hand tied behind his back, had to price it so incredibly high. The fact of the matter is, without getting ridiculous, trying not to get ridiculous, the fact of the matter is, it just is expensive. So the Shaman baseline is going to cost you 200. The big problem is that that means that every version of it, all of the cool stuff, which I, would suggest because, you know, hey, get fun steals if you can. M4, high recommend. I like M4. But all of the fun stuff is going to be inherently more expensive. All of the sprint runs that I have seen have been 220 kind of as a minimum. And even aside from that, the fact that they're sprint runs at all is very, very frustrating. The St. Nick's Knives version with the 4V and the red G10 handles. Was it G10 or Micarta? I think it was G10. With that 4V blade, especially on this on this model specifically, based on my understanding of what 4V is, I, it, I feel like that was kind of the highest version of the Shaman, what it was always supposed to be. Kind of how I view a Maxim at Native 5 but it was a limited run with like 300 pieces or something. I, I don't know how many pieces. Most sprint runs are 800 to 1,000. But the fact of the matter is that it was limited and will never be done again. I have emailed them about this. The crewware and Z-Ware that are released with Micarta scales, those are limited run. Get them while you can. They aren't going to be done again. I do not know 
other than plain plain edge versus spidey edge, coated versus satin S30V, I don't know of a single version of the Shaman that is not a straight up sprint run. And it's very frustrating. This is a very cool version. I'm sure the others are very cool versions and it'd be really cool if people could actually get their hands on them. Instead, you have admittedly people like me waiting in line with great gnashing of teeth fighting for their one. Well, what chance does, does somebody else have at getting it if you've got 500 people waiting in line? And that means that people who, for instance, I would have loved the St. Nick's version, but I didn't hear about it until months after. And, you know, I, you just missed the drop. That means that you are dependent on another company's newsletter to actually warn you that something's happening. Well, not all the not all of the retailers are good at doing newsletters. St. Nick's, for instance. It's just, it's it's a very frustrating aspect of what Spyderco is. And yes, I understand. I am a contributor to this. Shut up. But I just wish that they weren't. Last and most important for me, most relevant to me, is the, the price, you know, I, I paid for it, obviously. It's mine, now I have it. The torques, I get over. The chamfering, I fixed mostly. The smooth scales, I'm going to fix. The thing that I can't fix is this. If you can see that, that is, that little black dot right there is the heel of the blade. That's that black dot. This is the only Spyderco compression lock, and I have several. This is the only compression lock that I know of that does this, and it's very frustrating. What it means is that as you close the knife, my finger is still on the lock. Actually, I can do this. That as you close the knife, that, that little heel is pushing on your finger, so you have to release it to finish. On no other Spyderco does this do that. This may even be a more prominent, yeah, this is a more prominent, uh, more prominent piece. But even still, finger completely on the lock, you can close the whole thing. It doesn't push your finger at all. That is off-centered. I need to fix that. But with the Shaman, and you get good at, this is difficult to do under a camera, you get good at it eventually letting go just in time, but you have to get good at it. Otherwise, the blade is going, not the blade, not the sharp part, just this little pokey bit, is going to hammer into your finger every time you try to close the knife. And that's very frustrating. That's not something that you should have to practice, unfortunately. But you do. That's, I don't even know what to call that. I just have it written down as weird bit. I don't know what to say about it. I don't like it and I wish that they had done something different. Maybe even extending the handle out a little bit or extending the lock out. I don't know. Don't do that. Spyderco, why did you do that? And if I had a much more powerful and precise Dremel, I'm sure I could cut that off with little to no problems. But I don't, so I can't. Here at the end of this, simply put, the Shaman is a beast of a knife. The Shaman is a proud member of Spyderco's super, super hard use knives. Everything about it lends itself to work. The blade shape, the strengthening of the tip, the thickening of the stock, while still being able to come down to a fairly acute edge, by the way. The forward finger troll, you know, big enough for a gloved hand, the contours, the bulging of the of of the handle that fits your hand so well, the pocket clip that is right there on the edge of your pants, ready to be pulled up, cut a zip tie, and go right back in. All of this combines to create a knife that is incredibly well designed. It's not something that I understood really when it was first released several years ago. Because at that time when I first saw it, that was, I believe, shortly after I got my first PM2. And having that in hand, well, I, I don't particularly know what the reason for this is. It's just a bit bigger. 
but then I handled one. And oh, well that makes sense. However, a good design does not a perfect knife make. And this is by no means perfect. It has its flaws. Mine had what are probably, uh, what may very well be small, just QC flaws. But there's also the design, I'm going to call it a design flaw of the little bit that hits your fingers. I, someone explained to me why that makes sense, why it had to be that way. I genuinely don't know. But all told, it's an incredible knife. It's something that I love, something that I trust, something that I am very glad to own. Guys, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or stories, let me know. Other than that, have a great day.